Hello YouTube, in this video I will show you how to install a DAISY Epoch server on a Linux machine. I'm using Debian Weezy 64-bit and first we need to download the Arma 2 and Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead game files. For that we need Steam CMD and um, we need to install a dependency for Steam CMD. So this is what I'm doing now. We just type sudo apt get install install lib 32gcc1 Then we create a directory for the Steam CMD script. And now we download the Steam CMD script from Steam. Um, I will link all uh, links to downloads um, in the video description. Um, so check the video description out um, for everything I copy and paste here. Now we extract the um, script. And now we need to make a script executable by typing chmod plus x steam cmd dot sh and steam dot sh and now we can start steam cmd by typing dot slash steam cmd dot sh Now you need to set the um, environment of Steam CMD to Windows. To do that, type add s steam cmd force platform type Windows. Um, after that, you have to log in with your Steam account. So type login and then your username. Uh, it will prompt you for your password. And then it will prompt you for the Steam Guard code if you have Steam Guard installed. So check your email. Um, and paste it there. Now we create the installation directory. To do that, type force underscore install underscore dir. Um, you can name this whatever you want. This will be the root directory of your server. So I just uh, create a directory run above the Steam directory and uh, name it epoch server. And then you can start download it, downloading Arma 2. To do that, type app update uh, and then the app ID of Arma 2. The American Arma 2 version is 33900 and for the rest of the world it's 33910. There are some differences uh, in the game and uh, yeah, that's two, it's two different games on, on Steam. There are two different versions, the American version and the uh, yeah version for the rest of the world. Uh, so we start downloading that now and you can see um, an error has occurred. Uh, I don't know why, it has something to do with the script and Steam itself. So um, 
it's not uh, the fault of the users or something. It's uh, it's something Steam has to fix and um, to fix this issue, I tr um, always try to um, reinstall Steam or Steam CMD or re-download it and start it up again. But um, I read you, uh, it may be fixed when you um, set the force install idea again. Um, but I don't really know how to fix this error. You just have to try it again and it might work. So you can see now it starts download downloading. Um, so if this error occurs, uh, try to set the false install here again. Uh, and if the update uh, crashes with the same error as as it has occurred here, um, then you need to reinstall it. Then you ne need to re-download um, the app, even if it is at 99.99%. Um, it won't it won't have every file and the server won't start up then. So you make sh sure that, um, so you have to make sure that uh, the game successfully installs. So after the download of Arma 2 has finished, we now want to download, um, you now want to download Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead. Also make sure uh, that after the download, this message here appears, success app 339 run zero or whatever app id you downloaded um, fully installed otherwise it won't work so to download arma 2 operation arrowhead type app update again and now the id 33930 um this arma 2 um yeah, game Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead um, doesn't have an American version. It's uh, a worldwide version. It's just this one ID, and this game doesn't have two different um, versions. So um, we, of course, want to download the beta, the latest beta patch to Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead. Um, to do that, we set the para parameter beta and, and then we need to specify the name of the beta and for armor 2 operation arrowhead it's just uh, beta so this will download armor 2 operation arrowhead with the latest beta patch after that's done we can quit steam cmd now and Let's change to some other directory, probably a home directory, and download the client, the epoch client and server files. Um, so I will download the client client files first. Um, this again can take a little moment. Now download the epoch server files. And to extract the seven zip um, files, you need uh, an application called p7zipfool. So uh, install that. And to extract the the archives, um, use the command seven z x for extract and the parameter o um, to specify the output directory. And note that you uh, don't uh, that you don't. Um, Put a space between this parameter and 
and the and the directory and the, uh, the path the path where you want uh, it to be extracted because otherwise um, it won't recognize it. So d put the um, directory directly um, next to the O without um, putting a space between that. Of course you want to extract um, the, the client and the server files um, into your uh, server root directory. Now extract the daisy um, epoch server files. Uh, just uh, use the same command as I showed a uh, I showed I used um, for the client files. And now switch to your server directory and copy with um, copy the mission files, the, the instance 11 generous folder into the root directory um, of your server. Um, to do that type cp uh, with the parameter r. Um, this will copy um, a whole directory and We want to copy from config examples and instance 11 generous. Um, yeah, copy that to instance 11 generous. So you can see. Now we copied that folder in the main directory in the root folder of our, of our daisy epoch server. And now let's go ahead and edit the config files. First the config cfg. Set the version number to 1.0.5.1, and the beta, um, the beta version to 125548. Uh, change the admin password. Um, of course, you should not use some PV as password. Um, think of something secure, otherwise people might log in into the admin interface of your server and ban people and mess around with the server. Um, below max players um, add the lines steam port um, and set that to 2300 and steam query port Set that to two three zero one. Um, you can just use any port here um, that is not used on your server. Um, now down here, change required build to one two five five four eight as it uh, at it at, at as it is uh, here in the in the version number of the server. Do not do not edit the uh, version number in the server name. Otherwise, it won't show up in um, various Daisy launchers, and you probably won't have that many users or players on your server. So don't change these part in the parentheses. Uh, but of course you can just change the server name to anything you like. Uh, I changed it to daisy epoch test server, it doesn't really matter. And now you can save it and edit the 
hive.ext.ini. Um, here you just need to set the username and password of the um, database user. Um, I set my user to epoch user and my password to test. Um, as always, think of something secure so uh, other people won't uh, be able to yeah, mess around with your server or anything. Save that and now you can install the uh, database server um, to do that type sudo apt get install my SQL server you will get prompted for setting a root user password um, definitely do that because uh, a root user without a password is always a big security hole and other users uh, if they get control over your server might mess with the with, with your database and steal um, other data f uh, that is not related to the Z. Um, if you have other things running on the database such as a forum or any website that um, saves uh, stores uh, user data um, so set a root password and confirm it okay i might have messed up that okay Now log in with your root user for the MySQL database. Uh, type MySQL minus u, u root minus p. And now create a new database. Type create database epoch or daisy epoch like uh, you specified in the um, hive ext.ini and each line with a semicolon and now create a user for the database epoch okay type um, create user epoch user at um, in most cases, you would use a uh, local host here, but um, if you are using the DAISY server on Linux and start the DAISY server with Wine, which we will um, come to after the, we uh, are done with the database stuff, um, it connects from your external server IP so um, type the address of your of your um, server um, and now identified by um, yeah, I will just type in the password you set in the um, hive external dot ini. Okay, I always uh, mistype identified as identified. I don't know why. So, and now um, grant all on daisy epoch dot star to epoch user at and now your external IP address again or the external IP address the IP version 4 address of the server And 
and to apply these uh, privilege changes uh, type flush privileges and now type quit to get out of the mysql command prompt uh, now we need to populate um, the database we created uh, with the epoch sql file so we can so it creates all the necessary data uh, login as root and or, yeah type mysql minus u root minus p then the database name is the epoch in this case and then type this lesser symbol here and then the path to the epoch sql file Okay, I think I mistyped the password again. Yeah, okay, now it works. Um, this will take a short moment um, because uh, it had the epoch SQL file has quite a few lines. I think around 8,000 lines or something. But you can see now it's done. And now we go to the um, home directory of, of our user again and download uh, Wine. Uh, Wine is necessary to execute uh, Windows programs on Linux. So uh, we download the newest development version of Wine. And to extract the zip file, we need to get um, a package called unzip. I had actually installed that already. So we type unzip master.zip. Go to wine minus master and now we need to install a few dependencies in order to um, compile Rhyme from source. So um, the dependencies depend on your uh, distribution you have. So um, there might be some differences between 32 and 64 bit. Just uh, Google it if you missing a few depend dependencies um, and I'm sure you will find them. If you are using Debian Breezy 64-bit, you can just copy and paste uh, uh, it from the file. I will link you in the video description. After all dependencies have been installed, type um, or execute the configure script uh, with the parameter enable win64 to uh, compile it as a 64-bit application. Uh, the configure script will check for all the depend dependencies and at the end of the script it will um, it will uh, notify you if you if uh, if some dependencies are missing. Um, so if some dependencies are missing just google the name and get the package you need and run the configure script again. Um, you don't necessarily need to do that. Um, the ARMA2 operation arrowhead server uh, doesn't need all features of Vine, so you can actually um, leave out uh, some things if you don't want to install all dependencies for uh, compiling wine. Uh, now you just type make 
and um, yeah, that will compile Rhine. Uh, it will take quite a while, around an hour. After Wine has compiled, type sudo make install to install the package. I compiled Wine as a um, 64 bit application because I tried um, to compile it as 32 bit application before and it complained um, about a missing shared memory extension. Um, when trying to display uh, the Wine GUI on my Windows desktop, um, and honestly, I don't know why it's trying to use the shared memory extension um, and why why it require why the 32-bit application requires it. Um, but I fixed it by just compiling it as 64-bit application. Um, and of course, um, you can't use the shared memory extension when you have the X server where the where um, the GUI is displayed on your Windows machine and the program is running on your Linux machine. Uh, they can't share the memory, and yeah, that's because this error uh, pops up. Uh, after you install the wine package, type sudo make clean to delete every um, pack every file that is left uh, which you from the compiling which you don't need anymore and now um, install two additional uh, packages the first one is win bind uh, you don't necessarily need that um, but uh, by installing WinBind, um, there's one, one error message less in the Wine output when you start the um, ARMA2 Operation Arrowhead server. Um, the um, messages aren't really that important. The server um, um, is running uh, runs without any errors, and um, yeah, you don't need to fix um, these these error messages um, but I install this package anyway because why not <laughs> and the second pack package is cap extract and uh, we need that for um, Ryan tricks Ryan tricks is a um, script for wine um, but, uh, which helps you um, installing some Windows applications such as the newest DirectX and the um, Visual um, Studio um, C++ um, redistribution package um, because the newest version of these two um, are a bit tricky to install under Rhine. You need um, cap extract um, to extract uh, the executable and <coughs> then you have to copy the DLLs into your system32 folder inside Ryan. Um, and then you have to set a few options and the Ryan tricks uh, handles all that for you. So install these two packages. And then go to your home directory and download the Ryan trick script. Make it executable with ch mod plus x Ryan tricks and Execute the script with the parameter xx. This will download the newest version of um, DirectX, and uh, it will take um, it will take a bit longer the first time you start Wine. So by using this command, um, Wine tricks also starts Wine, and it will it will take a moment. Um, normally, it would. 
um, pop up with the window and um, say that the ride, that ride is configuring and um, that takes a few minutes so um, just be patient and let uh, wine tricks install the newest version of direct x okay now run wine tricks again uh, with the peri parameter uh, vc1 2013 uh, and now um, you can install or now install um, xming on your windows system uh, xming is a x server for windows so you can then set your display variable on Linux to your um, to your computer's IP address and it will show um, every um, GUI window on your desktop. So go ahead and download uh, the setup and execute it. And now uh, run xming, um, but uh, start the xming launch uh, executable and just uh, press next until you until this little icon is in your taskbar. Um, that's the xming server. You can um, close it by pressing exit here. And now set your display variable uh, to your computer's IP address. Be sure to um, uh, forward the port 6000 um, if you're sitting behind a router firewall. So uh, type display and then your IP address. display we have specified 0.0, 0. Uh, end the line with a semicolon and type export display. You can check um, your environment variables with print env. And um, now you can start up your DAISY server. Um, let's switch to the directory of our server and create a start script. Uh, we want it to be a bash script, of course, a shell script. And as always, you can just copy and paste the start parameter from the text document I link in the description. Now make it executable and start up the server. You will now see um, the Armature Operation Airhead server window pop up on, pop up on your desktop. Um, of course, this is only for testing and debugging purposes. Um, later we will install a virtual X server on your Linux server um, so you don't have to use a GUI on your Linux server um, in order to run the server. So you can see the, the um, Armature Operation Arrowhead server console. I will now start Armature Operation Arrowhead and then join the server and see if everything if everything works okay now press the multiplayer button of course you have to enable daisy epoch um, in your expansions to do that um, just click on expansions and 
enable daisy epoch 1.0.5.1 enable it and restart the game and then click on multiplayer um, make sure address is set to internet and then click the reroute button and enter your IP address um, of the Linux server and now we can join the server you can see um, that I'm um, that the um, console output is displayed correctly and everything and now um, <clears throat> let's see if the connection to the database uh, works okay um, you can see now this happens when there's an error here in our console it says library msvcr120 dll um, is missing and this usually only happens um, if Ryantrix doesn't uh, don't does not um, install the um, the vc run f um, 2013 uh, package correctly so Let's try that again and hopefully it works this time. Uh, I don't really know why it didn't work, but just try that again. Okay, we need to change the directory. Okay, now you can see um, <clears throat> it extracted the DLLs and we should, um, it, the server should work now. So try it, let's try it again. You can see here msvcr120 um, got extracted to our um, direct to our uh, system 32 directory so yeah let's start up the server <clears throat> somehow these um, errors always occur when I'm recording uh, bad luck I guess uh, and I also don't know why um, why these errors keep popping up because uh, I think we just just uh, installed these um, DLLs but I hope installing them again uh, fix it yeah okay installing these DLLs again fixed it and you can see our server has access to the database and we are joining the game right now so I can close the server just by pressing the X here or by pressing Ctrl C to um, stop the server. And I will exit out of Arma 2 as well. Yeah, it will take um, it will take a while since um, these errors here are bugs and wine um, that have to be fixed and it will wait for timeout and the timeout is 60 seconds and yeah we just have to wait a moment when these errors occur and it will also delay the startup of the server in some cases so the server has started up when this message here appears and sometimes as you can see here these errors appear but um, the server will work anyway as it has something to do um, with the sound of uh, with the sound uh, with, with the sound DLL but um, yeah you don't need that for the server so the server works anyway and now it has crashed as you can see but 
yeah, it's a bit buggy and laggy, but uh, the server um, so uh, the server is working and it's actually it's quite it works quite well. It has um, multi-core functionality and all that, so the performance is the same as on Windows or might be even better. Um, and to uh, start your server in background now, we need um, to install uh, a virtual X server. So install the package xvfb. In order to um, keep your server running when you disconnect from your SSH session, uh, you need a session manager. I recommend Tmux. You can find a good documentations uh, online. Just Google Tmux documentation and it will tell you everything you need to know about Tmux. Um, basically, it's just a new session and you can create different panels uh, and make everything look nice. And um, yeah, uh, we need to set our display output now to um, our local host. Uh, I will use the display ID one and then export display. And now we can also display a um, CPU and RAM um, overview. Um, note that the RAM isn't actual the used RAM, but the um, the RAM that is allocated to to um, yeah the the programs and every other application can just take away that allocated RAM from the applications or, or uh, something like that. It isn't really the used RAM of your server. Um, but yeah, you can monitor the CPU um, usage with HTOP and the running processes and all that stuff. Uh, below that, I will um, create the server console output um, as as live output so um, to, to print uh, a text file uh, live on your on your screen so to say uh, type tail minus f and then the text file you want uh, to display in our case it's instance generous instance 11 generous and then the armature operation Arrowhead server RPT and now create a virtual display to do that type uppercase X VFB one minus screen zero. 800 by 600 by 16 and okay now we have um, a virtual have created a virtual screen um, you can now hit ctrl c and it will um, it will just keep running to uh, close this virtual screen and type in jobs you can see all running jobs and if you want to kill a job um, type kill percentage and then the number and this will kill the screen. So um, now start up your daisy epoch server again. You can also close or un even uninstall the xming application now if you don't need it anymore. 
and now the daisy server runs in background it takes of course a moment to start up and as you can see it prints all console output in this little window over here and yeah that was ev basically everything you need to know um, in order to run a daisy epoch server on linux um, you can now go ahead and create a cron job for restarting the server um, or whatever you like um, most scripts um, for epoch servers should run in linux as well so if you have like admin tools or something it um, also should work on in linux um, and yeah uh, thanks for watching and i hope i could help you and my video wasn't um, too confusing and i apologize for my uh, lacking skills in, in talking and explaining stuff um, yeah, but uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.